Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Jorge, there's been a lot of talking in the buildup to this fight. I've done a lot of it, whether people have enjoyed that or not. <laughs> it's close to be time to fight, though. But what have you learned about your opponent during the ups and downs of this press tour? The, the craziness that has happened, the trash talk back and forth. I never worried about my opponents. I just worry about me, training, you praise to God, ready to go eat, and then all the fighters on stage want to go eat. So I'm like, what the fuck's going on, man? Let's get, let's get this moving already. His opponent, Stockton, California's finest. Man who took part in some of the biggest rivalries in combat sports history. Record-breaking pay-per-view numbers in his two-fight series with Conor McGregor. He made his first foray into professional boxing, going 10 hard rounds with Jake Paul. But he's been around boxing gyms and boxing legends, getting great work for so many years. Nate Diaz, Nate, so great to have you back. Like we said, final time, we've got to get up here and share some of these words to help sell this fight on Saturday. But boy, have you guys given us a lot to sell, a lot of heat back and forth between the two of you and your respective teams. What does that mean, if anything, in terms of Saturday's fight, the, the, the heated nature of the bad blood between the two camps? There's no heated nature for me. I'm just here to do my job, get the job done. I train hard. I came in, came in with my team. We train hard, uh, all of us, and uh, we're here to win. Jorge, we were here a month ago. We mentioned the, the brawl that took place to close the press conference just outside the arena here. When you look back on that, what are your recollections? What are your takeaways? I'm plead the fifth. <laughs> you protected your coach. You protected your team. That's got to add to the bad blood we have for Saturday night, the motivation for you to come in here and score a second victory over one of your most star-studded rivals. Does that raise the ante, raise the motivation level for you entering Saturday? Man, I just want to fight already. You know, I'm kind of waiting shit. You know, I just want to fight. This is cool. I know we got to sell pay-per-views. I just want to fucking fight already and knock this motherfucker dead, bro. Obviously, I didn't like what happened at the press conference, but that's in the rear view mirror. That's, uh, my emotions are not going to take place on Saturday, you know? What's going to take place on Saturday is the six months of isolation, hard work in a boxing camp with boxers, learning the craft from the ground up and, and nothing else, you know? Whatever took place on, on that day doesn't really change the outcome of what's going to happen in the fight because I'm still going to knock this motherfucker dead. Nate? Training camp was extended an extra month. You've said... Maybe you weren't at your, your your best level of fitness ahead of the Nate ahead of excuse me the Jake Paul fight. How different is that for you this camp, preparing for Jorge Masvidal? It's slightly different. Good stuff. It's good stuff. Nate, what are your expectations for Saturday's fight? I came here to win. How are you going to do that? How fuck would you do it? I I, you know, I, I, I'm big on talking into microphones. They don't really, they don't, I don't really put on the gloves too often. You're the expert here, Dave. By any means. Any means necessary. Jorge, how do you get your hand raised on Saturday? Violence. <laughs> so the only thing I've ever brought to the sport of combat is just violence and, uh, and some techniques so as I get my hand raised and then eating these cheeseburgers right after I get out of here so I have some energy. Regardless of what goes on on Saturday, does this end the rivalry between you and Nate Diaz? Ain't no rivalry, bro. Nate, same for you? You're going to piss these fighters off, but everybody here want to go eat already, man. Nate, first, I just wanted to ask you two things, man. Um, first question is, um, who inspired you when you were, uh, you know, first up and coming when you were boxing? Who really made you want to become one of the greats? Uh, first and foremost, my brother, my big brother, was fucking doing a lot of good shit, putting me on game with a lot of people. I liked Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, Ricardo Mayorga, uh, Fernando Vargas, and uh, all those guys, and... Uh, 
Shit, everybody. That's too many to name. Wow. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. Uh, second question I have for you today, man, is um, when you do get knocked out, are you going to retire? Who said that? So I know who you are. Uh, or that if, little bitch boy, you fucking little pussy faggot. What the fuck? If, 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 if you do, if you do. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to be watching. I just, I'm just i excited to see both sides, but... It, I'm going to kick you in your fucking leg, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, P.S., fuck you. I, I have a lot of respect for everyone, man. It's just, I want to see a great fight. Fuck you. <laughs> it's little shit kids like this little bitch talking to this motherfucker that is like uh, changing the times. Need your little ass whoop. I got little girls over here that'll fuck you up. <laughs> we have any more media questions? I gave you.